The Regrettable Lanyap, a collection of today's very short stories by Richard Loverich, the Central Avenue edition, with guitar by Corey Aldrich. King Herbert I had, in the two weeks since his coronation, knighted, conquered, and decreed. But he had not, despite his wife's protestations, left the guest toilet. Initially, the anthropomorphic antics of Pebbles the Cat were quite endearing. Watching TV, frowning, playing musical instruments, walking on hind legs. But lately, her behavior had changed. Her mood, now that of ambivalence, bordering on haughtiness. Far more troublesome, and to owner Robert's chagrin, she had also begun demanding money. A lot of money. Falling flakes pirouetted around the fenders of plodding bulbous cars. Kids flapped penguin arms stiffened in red plaid and brown cotton. Galoshes bearing the burden of little glaciers on their toe tops. A hill full of sledders aimed for their billowing, pipe-smoking, fedora-topped dads, each wearing masks of 8 millimeter movie cameras. Ben closed the shades and sat heavily in his armchair. It was snowing outside, but clearly in the wrong decade. Grace's mom had spared the rod. Unfortunately, she had also spared the washing machine, iron, refrigerator, and oven. Black curlicues of doubt had yet to be cleared from what should have been the clean page of her new day. Rising too early, Andrea had woken before her defining aspirations, before herself. Her most tailored suit proved inadequate camouflage, and she was devoured whole before the dreaded board meeting had even gotten fully underway. In the way to early winter darkness of the family room, enlivened only by the kinetoscopic glow of the big screen TV, Heather trained the remote upon a lumbering, slumbering Bradley, her husband, and spiritlessly pressed random buttons in the vain hope of effecting some kind of change. Carlos rose early and found that he was living in an alternate dimension, one in which his wife had risen even earlier than he to make him breakfast. He remained in bed, lest he run afoul of other, less fortuitous aberrations. There had to be an explanation, and the only explanation that made sense is that he was now underwater. And what's more, that he could breathe underwater. Well, as is often the case with Zeb, he was only half right. Searching for a high back chair, she instead ended up with a low life boyfriend. In the future, Sheila would have to exercise greater caution when Googling. Tina made her way through the murk of her living room where, obscured by a taciturn moon, the skulking armchair pitched her into the depths of an accomplice rug. She fell, unabated by weft or warp, floor or earth, and woke on a sun-blanched beach, head dizzy from the surf, her lips tasting of salt. Tina rose, unsure of her balance, and with feet confused by a betraying beach towel, tumbled to the waiting sand, between whose grains she freely slipped. What a day this was turning out to be. 
the cruise was interrupted by buzzfly helicopters and encircling Coast Guard boats. Although they had only asked for smiles, maritime law saw Jim and Miriam as pirates. Cousin Phil, one of a pair of identical twins, nonetheless recognized himself with unerring accuracy in the childhood photos his Aunt Erica unearthed after Christmas dinner. His brother Earl was the one who was rarely photographed without an air gun, while he was the kid with the patch where his left eye used to be. 